everyone in the chat. Please, um, you know, say your organization, use the chat as an opportunity to uh, lift any concerns, questions you might have as we go through this conversation. There is a question and answer section at the end. We're going to spend a good amount of time answering um, questions that, that you all might have. So yet again, thank you for attending um, this workshop and this information session. We are really excited to get this, um, this opportunity off the ground. So we're gonna go through our agenda. So we're welcoming, welcome everybody. Um, we're gonna have a youth artist performance from, she's from Do More, um, who's one of our year one grantees. Really excited for you all to see and um, watch her performance. Uh, BCYF Mission and History, we're gonna have Kara who's going to support with um, a little, little history of BCYF and the Lane Nat Foundation. Um, then Alicia Lee, our president, is going to discuss a grassroots fund overview. So those questions that you might have now about who's eligible, what is the opportunity, and how to take advantage of some of these offerings, um, she'll go deep have a deep dive into that. And then we're gonna discuss technical assistance and overview of what offerings we have. So my name is Kiata Ariate. I mean, I am a technical assistance provider with the Baltimore Children and Youth Fund. Really excited about this project, excited to work in community and with community. And please, if you have questions, um, put them into the chat in the question and answer area. And also um, if you wanna hold them to the end of the session um, where we had that time to actually get some attention to the questions and answers, please um, just think about those questions when we get there, because many of your questions will be answered during this brief and during this workshop that we're hosting today. So we want to go to our next slide. I'm going to introduce Destiny Butler. Destiny Butler, um, she's a graduate of Western School for Girls in Baltimore City and the current and two-time Baltimore Youth Poet Laureate. Get her agenda up, all right. The only poet to hold the position twice, so from 2020 and 2021. Growing up, she was often told she had more of an intellectual rather than an artistic brain, uh, which reasonably caused her to have a lot of self-doubt when it came to self-expression, causing Destiny to back out of opportunities and not give things her all. Going to Western, she get the opportunity to meet and be mentored by Mecca Verdell and Kima Flight, who gave her a drive to invest in her writing ability. So we asked Do More to uh, give us a youth poet who can speak about hope and speak about the future that they want to see within Baltimore. And they sent Destiny's a recorded video. So um, please play the video. Oops, I think we're having some issue with the sound. Up the sound. Yeah, the sound is still not working. Let's see. Apologies, we're on it right now. They said the grass ain't always greener on the other side. 
But when the hood start looking like great gardens, I start feeling like a rose in the concrete bending. I mean, like breaking my back to reach the sunlight. I mean, folding myself into the origami that is society's expectations. I mean, like Max's favorite. I mean, like pretty for a black girl. I mean, like the prettiest flower in the garden. See, sometimes I just want to grow. Sometimes I want to glow, be somebody's brighter side. Sometimes I want to feel happy, like yellow. But see, I used to want to be white and feel light and feel privileged. Because sometimes it is hard to be this dark and to feel this blue. And sometimes my soul feels black, feels like a black hole swallowing my existence. And sometimes I feel trapped or maybe I feel like a trap. Like I pull people in and wrap them in my trauma. But nowadays... I'm starting to feel like pride, like the color purple, like the queen of my own issues. Like, yeah, I'm insecure, but I'm also that chick. Feel fly like a plane found out I was strong enough to carry my own baggage. Like I might be ugly, but I'm funny. So I'm gonna get the last laugh, sis, and I'm black and I'm smart. And you know, black absorbs all colors. So I guess, you're looking at a reading rainbow and I'm black and I'm proud. So when they ask what I mix with, I'll be like greatness. I'll be like triumph. I'll be like struggle, no shade. And when they ask what I mix with, I'll be like this black is pretty hair. This black is pretty hair. And there we lit everywhere. I say this black is art. It ain't God painting a pretty picture. Thank you for, yes, thank you, Destiny, um, for your contribution. Thank you, Do More. They the said work. the grass ain't always greener on the other side. Thank you, Do More, for all the work that you do in the community. Um, you know, when I was the TA provider for the last time, o Olu and, and Do More was one of my um, grantees that I had to provide technical assistance for and you know, I'm an advocate for artists and supporting artists and they've always shown up and shown out in the community. So thank you all for the work that you do. And uh, now we have um, a brief presentation by Kara Ritter, who's going to provide some foundation for us. Like who is BCYF? What's the mission, some vision and, and the history of, of the project? Thank you, Kieta. Good evening, everyone. Um, and very hard to follow that. We're excited that Do More has been one of our grantees, excited about the young people that they serve and how they serve them. Uh, first, let me say, looking at the chat, seeing who's here in the room, just love seeing past grantees, past applicants, um, some, some new names and faces in here. This is really what BCYF is all about. Um, if we can go to the first slide, please. Talk about the background. Okay, so BCYF was created um, as a dedicated fund to support programs for Baltimore children, youth, and young adults. It is a non-lapsing fund. That means it gets funded every year through city tax dollars. And the fund was launched in 2015 uh, by then Baltimore City Council President Bernard Jack Young and approved by voters in November 2016 with over 80% support. Um, it went to a referendum because it was not necessarily supported by all folks in the city, um, but it was made very clear that taxpayers believed we should have this, again, non-lapsing fund. It renews every year to support specifically our young people. Next slide, please. BCYF was actually created to be different than traditional funding streams. It's about investing in community-based initiatives to help improve the outcomes for Baltimore City children and youth, specifically testing and demonstrating promising strategies to promote a more equitable distribution of public capital amongst Baltimore's children and youth serving programs and initiatives. Here's what this means. I'm sure a lot of you out there have applied for grants. You sent your application out and you got a rejection letter and you don't know how a decision was made, who made the decision, if there was anything in your application you could have done better, et cetera. BCYF is about participatory grant making. 
there were members of the community that in the past have and in the future will continue to support the decision making about one, what types of programs, youth serving programs, should BCYF be investing in? What are those priority areas? What are the things that are important? And then members of the community reading the grant applications, scoring them, making recommendations and saying, this is what we think should be funded and at this level. This is very different than how philanthropy typically operates. Our goal is to provide one, support to grantees and support to applicants in advance of the application so that you understand what we're looking for and to provide you some additional support in areas where you may be uncertain. And then for our grantees to provide technical assistance during that process as well. When we talk about testing and demonstrating promising strategies, part of the technical assistance that we provide is something that other organizations aren't doing. And Kieta is gonna talk about this a little bit later, but really also using our community resources, our voices, black, brown, Asian, indigenous people voices to provide that TA support Oh, I'm sorry, somebody has some uh, echo to provide some TA support um, for, again, applicants and grantees. Now we have driving values and concepts, which are on this next slide. And these are really important because BCYF wants its portfolio of grantees to look like our values, to reflect our values. So one is elevating authentic youth and community leadership. So number one, we have youth members on our board, not tokenized youth members, but actually youth members that get a vote, that have fiduciary responsibilities, that are held to the same level of responsibilities as our adult members. And we have trained them through the Avis Ransom Institute to be prepared for this level of service. Increasing investment in historically under-resourced children and youth populations and communities. Many of you, you know who you are. As I said before, you've applied for grants, you've not received them, or you've received them with a lot of restrictions. And unfortunately, BCYF comes with some of those because they're public funds. But our goal is not to punish, but to support and lift up organizations that are doing good work, that have often been overlooked, that have been working in our communities for years, sometimes dec decades, with very little fanfare, very little acknowledgement. Um, sometimes you don't have access to these sort of corporate boards and corporate members that bring big checks. And so really it's about investing in those organizations to help them succeed, not just with BCYF, but to succeed post BCYF. Increasing investment in grassroots leaders and leadership, leadership and leaders of color. A lot of folks have never been invested in. They've never had access to peer leadership, um peer opportunities to work together in mentorship and coaching it's really also for us about investing in these leaders and the leadership and promoting racial ethnic and intersectional equity and inclusion in practice we all know that in 2020 a lot of organizations threw up that black Lives hashtag black lives matter and nothing changed we saw very little shift in those organizations we really are about including it in practice it's embedded and should be embedded in everything that we do as bcyf and everything that our grantees do as well and then promoting greater transparency and accountability of process so as i mentioned before some of you are familiar with year one we had 24 members of the public that reviewed applications and made decisions um, those decision makers were named um, there was feedback provided to a number of organizations about what worked in their application, what didn't. It really is about creating greater access and accessibility to BCYF as part of our values. Next slide, please. Oh, is that my last slide? That's my last slide. So again, I just want to recap um, BCYF Inc., the organization that now runs the Children and Youth Fund, has been the permanent intermediary since July 1 of 2020. We came in after Associated Black Charities. 
We are really excited for this to be our first open call for applications. We're really excited for it to be specifically for the grassroots fund. Um, and I just love, you know, I see the attendee count increasing. Again, just really excited about folks being here, um, listening to what's going to come up, learning more about what BCYF is doing. And I'm excited about the direction that our organization is taking in order to, again, support grassroots organizations and their leaders, in addition, their staff as well. These are members of our community that often get overlooked. And BCYF is here to say, times need to change. We need to do things differently if we want to have better outcomes for young people in the city of Baltimore. Thank you, Kieta. Thank you for that history, Kara. I'm interested in learning more about the history and the foundation of BCYF. You can always visit the bcyffund.org website. There's some interesting statistics and some other history items on the website that you can take a look at. Um, our next section will go deeper into the grassroots fund. What is the fund? What's the purpose of this fund? And what are the opportunities that, that we're holding within this, um, within this fund? So Alicia Lee, our president, um, is going to take over now. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kira. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to see so many people in the chat, yes? So I see folks are sounding off in the chat. They're putting in their name and, and what organization they represent. And if you haven't done that, do that as well. I see folks making connections and uh, people are seeing people they haven't seen in a while. So that's a great way um, just to kind of keep that chat energized. Thank you so much, Rachel. You were the first one in. So my name is Alicia Lee, and I am the newly announced president at BCYF. And I'm excited to be here with you all tonight because we have, this is the, it's so exciting. This is what we've been waiting for. We have um, about $5 million to dispense and I say about because it's an approximate number, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, right? Um, through the grassroots fund. So let's dive in. I'm gonna give that overview of exactly what you can expect from the grassroots fund and, um, and then we'll keep moving along. So the grassroots fund, it's important to remember, now we have about approximately $5 million to award um, this year in this grant cycle. And it's important to remember that nationally only 2% of the philanthropic dollars that are given out nationally are given to grassroots organizations. Despite the research and also the common sense and cultural knowledge that we have, that grassroots organizations often have the most potent community solutions. Despite all of that, this trend persists, this giving trend persists. And as Kira mentioned earlier, BCYF here is to interrupt those trends, okay? So the Grassroots Fund addresses those traditional gaps in Baltimore's funding landscape that disadvantage grassroots organizations. We will be providing unrestricted funding for grassroots Baltimore-based youth serving organizations. This funding can be used to support your organization's overall mission, okay? So you're gonna get to decide whether this should go for staffing or infrastructure or maybe some strategic planning or facilities, right? You're gonna get to decide, all right? In addition to the financial support, we'll also be awarding in conjunction with those financial support packages some rigorous capacity building support to really help and partner with organizations to help them become sustainable and also to assist them with their growth. Now, just a reminder, Kira's given us some background history on BCYF, but this is a pilot, okay? We are piloting a new application, right? The, the grassroots fund is brand new. We've never had a grassroots fund before at BCYF. We've got some new staff. Yes, and new staff coming all the time. And we also have some new technology tools. So there's a lot of things that we are piloting with this grant portfolio. All right, next slide, please. So eligibility, let's talk about how do I know if I am eligible for the grassroots fund? Okay, next slide. There we go. Thank you, eligibility. Grassroots organizations are defined in this request for proposals as organizations that are community accountable organizations with an annual operating budget of $250,000 or less. It's important for us to mention that just in alignment with our goals and values, 
We will be prioritizing organizations that are led by Black, Brown, Indigenous, or Asian people. Now, how do you know if you should apply? If your organization has three things, then this, <laughs> this cycle is for you. Number one, is your organization Baltimore City based and serves children and or youth that are ages 24 years old and under? So that's children, youth, and young adults, right? Number two, if your organization is a Maryland 501c3 organization or you have a confirmed fiscal sponsorship relationship by the time of application. And finally, number three, your organization's budget is $250,000 or less. So that's how you'll know, yes, I am eligible for this application. Now, when you go to our website, and we're gonna share the link with you, I'm sure several times in the chat, when you go to our website and check out the resources, the first thing that pops up when you hit that grassroots page is an eligibility quiz. So you can take the quiz and see if you're eligible for the grant, if you still just want that confirmation, which I, I would want if I were you. <laughs> All right, next slide. All right, grass. Grassroots Fund Grant Awards. So we have, again, about 35 grant awards to give away. These are $150,000 grants that will be spread out over three years. So in equal incre increments. So what you can expect is to receive $50,000 in year one, $50,000 in year two, $50,000 in year three, totaling over the next three years, $150,000. That's the investment, the financial investment. We will accept and review all applications that are eligible. Every eligible organization's application will be reviewed by our um, staff and also by our grant panel participatory grant making process, which we'll talk about in a minute. BCYF will also provide robust technical assistance for all applicants. And we're going to go very deep into what that technical assistance entails, but we're talking about over 130 hours of free assistance around nonprofit management, structuring the application, and really start to think about this application um, as a tool in and of itself. Many of you already have beautiful boilerplates to describe the incredible work you do with young people here in Baltimore City. So you'll be able to easily input your information into our application. And if you don't, then this technical assistance will be really helpful to you as you build up this case for your organization, okay? And that case can be used with BCYF, but it also can be used in your marketing campaigns, in the way you communicate with parents about um, registration, in meeting other funders. So this application in and of itself is an opportunity to kind of clarify the language that you use to talk about your program. So the fund, again, will make these awards 35, 35 awards uh, this year, and that totals $5 million, okay? All right, the grants are payable in those equal installments over three years. I just wanna mention that again, because people are seeing that 150,000, and I want you to remember that that's payable over three years. And remember that we'll also be investing in that capacity building. Next slide, please. So the application is available on our website at bcyfund.org. Um, and there's a couple pieces there that are really exciting. Number one, when you go to the website, you're gonna see a full expanded request for grant proposal manual document. And in there, you're gonna see um, an overview of BCYF, an overview of the Grassroots Fund. You're also gonna see all of the application questions. So you can get started, as soon as you download that document, you can get started on your application. You're also going to find in that manual all of the policies and procedures on managing the grant. So it's important for you to check those out, and we'll be having tons of technical assistance so you can ask more detailed questions after you've reviewed that document about what does it really entail, what are the reporting requirements for BCYF. Okay, and then also in there, there's an applicant timeline and um, lots a checklist, right? Some tools that you can use to really guide your application journey. In addition, we have an applicant workbook. So you can download a workbook so you can start <laughs> typing in your responses and crafting your messaging, right? You can start that today. We have a Word document version. We have a PDF version. We have a fillable PDF version so you can start filling in. And that's gonna be really helpful to you. And that you can start today. Now we have an online grant portal which will open on April 15th. 
And on April 15th, you can begin, if you have that workbook in place, you can take that workbook, put it on one side of your screen. Some of you have two monitors, right? A lot of people in COVID have two monitors. So one or the other, put it on the right side, pull up the online grant portal on the left and start to copy and paste that information right into the grant portal. So we've got you know plenty of time to kind of develop these tools and we are here to support you through this process. All right, next slide, please. After I'm finished, Kiera's going to come back in a moment and she's going to go way deep into the technical assistance. But I just want to give a little um, overview of what's happening there. Applicants can download today on our website a calendar. It's about eight pages long of offerings that are happening between today and May 14th. Now, why May 14th? Well, the grant closes on May 15th. So we up until May 14th, we will be providing robust technical assistance over 130 hours of free opportunities to elevate your application, check in with folks, meet with experts. Um, and there's a wide range of offerings in that catalog that you can find online. OK, the support topics include grant writing basics, program development, budgeting and reporting, just application support. Maybe you're just like, look, I feel pretty strong about um, what I have here, but I'd love some feedback. Feedback helps us to grow. Come get some from us. And of course, some tech support for how to access that new grant portal, right, that we have. Again, over 130 hours, all free um, in a range of formats, including virtual and in-person, small, large groups, webinar style, one-on-one -on -one sessions. And even if you're, you know, don't have a lot of time or feeling a little nervous about asking questions, you can even email. You can even email us and ask us for asynchronous support. So we're really here to make sure that someone can answer your question. You can meet with the person or get that response. The full calendar of events is available, again, at bcyfund.org. And you can begin to register for some of the sessions that are happening this month. Next slide, please. So just a little note about this participatory grant making process. So BCYF will be utilizing public <laughs> we'll have a, a public call looking for folks who are interested in being a part of the decision making around grants. So if you know, maybe some of you that aren't applying this year, right, maybe some of you or no community members that are not applying for the grant, if you're applying for the grant, you don't want to also be on the panel. But we're looking for folks um, to review and help us to make these decisions. And really, um, we're looking for, um, you know, a wide range of expertise. People who are selected to serve on the grant review panel will be compensated and will also be expected to participate in some required trainings in addition to, of course, the re grant review process. And there's some eligibility pieces here, too. You should apply um, as a panelist if you're not applying for a grant already. And if you reside in the Baltimore area, you have some experience designing or operating youth programs. And if you're also familiar with Baltimore's youth service landscape, if that's you or that's somebody you know, you can please share this information with them and this public open call will go out next week. So now's a good time just to start to think about um, maybe some of you are considering, oh, I'd like to apply for BCYF next year. Being on the applying to the panel is a great way to learn more about BCYF, right? So there's lots of ways to be involved here at BCYF and we want to connect with all of you. So just to overview a few important dates around the grassroots fund. We have approximately $5 million to disperse to 35 grantees. Grant awards, again, $150,000 spread across three years in equal disbursements. So $50,000 a year for the next three years. On March 15th, which was just a few days ago, our website was updated with all oh, tons of resources, the RFP manual, the application workbooks. Um, you can download and look at our priorities. You can look at the rubric that we'll be using to assess your applications. Please look at all these materials. Um, and on April 15th, the grant portal will open. You can take your application workbook and take that grant application Chrome page and start to copy and paste and put your information right into the grant portal. The portal will remain open until May 15th. Now, May 15th is an important day, and our technical assistance ends 24 hours earlier than that. So from today until May 14th, you can come and get free technical assistance from BCYF. And in August, you can expect those letters of decision to be dispersed to all applicants, okay? 
So we are so excited to be able to be here tonight to make that announcement about $5 million that will be invested in the youth, sec youth sector here in Baltimore City. And we're excited to be on this journey with all of you and to find more ways to support each other's work, to learn about the work you're doing, all for, right, all for the impact around Baltimore City's children and youth. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Kieta. And I see Michelle is already, Michelle Webb says, she is definitely ready to get in on these technical services. Yes, thank you. We are excited just as you are excited, um, Michelle. Yeah. So thank you, Alicia, for that information on the grassroots fund. Uh, you're gonna hear some of that information repeated, but I learned from marketing, someone has to hear something like 20 times before it gets stuck in their head. <laughs> So um, please, and again, use the question and answer um, figure to ask any question that you might have. Um, I don't want you to put it in the chat because it might get lost um, with all the hellos and highs in there. So it's best to put it in the question and answer um, location. So now we're going to go over like what is technical assistance? And this is pretty important because I think everyone has maybe a different a slightly different version of what TA is. And uh, we wanna make sure that we are all speaking the same language. So um, we'll have some of our TA team discuss um, what, what is technical assistance, like the BCYF way. And so ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening. My name is David Miller. I represent the Strategic Resources Group. I'm part of a dynamic dream team of technical assistance consultants that will be rolling out over 120 hours of TA, covering a wide range or wide spectrum of issues and things that folks will need to address as they complete their applications. And so on the screen, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read the definition, but we've created sort of an operational definition to better help you understand what technical assistance is. And in short or in brief, technical assistance is designed it's targeted, which we have decided that is really important, but it's really designed to provide you with the kind of ongoing support to strengthen your organization, to help you uh, complete the application, but at the same time, begin to think deeply about things like, how do you create the narrative uh, for your proposal? How do you tell the story? Oftentimes, people really struggle with um, capturing the story of the dynamic work that they're doing. Um, things like performance metrics. I mean, there's a part of the fund where you have to clearly uh, delineate what are your performance metrics. And so we'll be having TA that addresses a whole host of things, even board development. There's some groups that may be struggling with uh, technical assistance pieces like board development, um, uh, volunteer recruitment from soup to nuts. We're gonna be offering, as Alicia indicated, over 120 hours, free hours of TA services. The key y'all is you gotta sign up. And what we know is oftentimes people sign up, but they don't show up. And so we really wanna make sure that you clearly understand that the services will be free. Uh, they will be robust in nature. We'll be doing face-to-face uh, -face engagements. We'll be doing virtual engagements. We'll be doing one-on-one. -on -one. So depending upon Whatever your technical assistant needs from soup to nuts, we've created a, a, a really robust, of a robust agenda. Again, we got the dynamic dream team of folks who will be able to provide uh, that, that ongoing technical assistance support. But once again, uh, you must sign up, check out the calendar that is already on the BCYF website. And definitely once you sign up, we definitely want you to make sure that you attend. And so thank you. And we are so encouraged and excited that you guys will be participating in this process. I'm gonna turn it back over to Kieta and she's gonna really provide a little bit more framing of the TA experience. Thank you very much, David. I'm really looking forward to working with this team of TAs. I think we've all taught cross paths, but this is a great opportunity for us to have alignment and to really work and to understand and figure out what it looks like and what it means to be a, a BCYFTA provider. So I wanted to briefly just talk about BCYF and TA and what it means to work with BCYF 
and our technical assistance team. So some of our core values include um, committing to achieving racial equity in a philanthropic sector. So, you know, we call on that and we speak to that often. And it's not only in our racial equity framework within BCYF, but it also exists in how we show up in community. Um, trying to, you know, uh, working to achieve to make a leveling play, a level playing field for grassroots organizations who don't often get those opportunities. Um, we also work in building community with local service providers. So we're going to show a, a landscape of the TA providers that are to come. And they are all Baltimore, you know, we work in community, we support organizations. So even in the chat, you can tell that some of our TA providers already have relationships with community. And we want to continue to instill that type of um, that type of feeling creating more opportunities for capacity building and technical assistance to strengthen community organizations. So calling it what it is, like having opportunities for our organizations to have community um, buy-in and have community support. Hold on one second, the presentation just... <laughs> and then also um, the last core value Mm -hmm. We're having some technical difficulties. There we go. Okay, so we can revisit and share that at a um, at a later time. But if you can see those core values that exist within BCYF have our racial equity framework um, through and through it. We are very intentional about the capacity building opportunities that we have and how we show up in community. So yet again, if you have questions about the service providers, uh, please put those questions into the chat in the question and answer section. And then um, we can follow up at the end of the call. So wanted to reiterate those uh, dates, those important dates again, and this can be found on the bcyfund.org website. This was taken straight from the West website. There's a link that would take you to the grassroots fund, and you'll see a lot of the information that Alicia discussed, but you'll also see this tab. It has important dates. Um, the RFP was released on March 15th. Uh, today is the first information session, March 17th you can actually start submitting your application on April 15th, and then it will close on May 15th, um, then it closes. So also in this blue box, you'll see the toolbox that's there, which is really a great opportunity for you to just have everything you need to apply for the grant in one place. So the RFP manual is really a fact sheet about 40 49 pages that explains reporting for once you become a, a awardee um what the requirements are as far as uh keeping up with your invoices and reporting for bcyf also what you need to have with you when you're applying so you need an mou from your fiscal sponsor if you uh plan on using a fiscal sponsor you have to have your metrics you know really uh, detailed you have to understand your outcomes like what is the impact of your program and that manual will go through and it will um help and support with that <laughs> uh, the application workbook two ways the pdf version is fillable you know and then also the word uh, version. So there's also a way that you can take that word version, right? Go to Google, upload it, share it with your team. It's something that we, we reiterate in TA is the writing this grant should not just be a one person effort. We need to get our entire team involved in what's happening so that everyone can have their input and take a look at it and help and support in the writing of this grant. Um, the scoring rubric. It's very important to have a scoring rubric ahead of time so you know what the panelists and what the community review panel will be looking at um, when it's time to review. So that's on the website. And of course, the TA calendar. As Alicia and the team mentioned, there are so many different types of opportunities available. And in a few seconds, we're going to go through and explain what each one are because there are five different specific ones and I want to make sure that you understand what happens when you sign up for um, one of those opportunities. 
2022 investment priority. As you work with any funder, you want to make sure that you understand what they are funding. So before you even apply for that organization, you want to make sure that your ideas are going to mesh directly with that funder and that organization. So those priorities will be a guide for you when um, <laughs> when, when you work on, on this. And then last, a BCY of smart metrics. I remember from year one, metric was a it was a huge piece that you know it was hard harder for some organizations than others. There is a very 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 uh, easy to follow framework for how to create and build metrics that was put together by our wonderful evaluation team, and that's available for you. And it's you just click on all these, download them. You can save them. Once we put the assistance at bcyfund.org, um, you can email us if you're having issues or concerns getting access to these, and we'll just we can email it right to you as a PDF. Um, so, yep. Next, <laughs> thanks, Mr. Bilal. <laughs> You can go to the next slide. So as I said before, I uh, wanted to briefly talk about these offerings, just so when you see the words open swim, you can know exactly what we're talking and we're saying the same language. So open swim is this, what we're doing right now, a large webinar form. They're gonna be between 60 to 90 minutes and it's gonna dig into some piece of nonprofit management. We're gonna have expert consultants come in and help us support that. One of the ones I'm really interested in learning about is the one where we have year one grantees come and they're going to give um, testimony as to what it was like being a BCYF grantee. And we know BCYF stands different and stands alone and with some of these other funders within the city. So you can actually understand and say, okay, yeah, this is something I want to be a part of. Or also, oh, well, maybe I'm not ready for this. And I can like, take a step back and try to do some more prep before I become a BCYF grantee. We're also going to have grant management one-on-one, um, managing staff, program development, you know, in those huge webinar forms um, where you can have um, a few dozen people in and do a question and answer feature. Similar to that, but pretty different are the deep dives, right? Those are the small group Zooms. So those are going to be limited to uh, 40 participants, but envisioning breaking out into smaller Zoom rooms to work with technical assistance. Um, really want to take advantage of this peer-to-peer -peer learner because we know you all are the experts. And we some of the questions that grantees have often mimic each other, right? They're along the same and they're parallel. So I've seen some great like aha moments when grantees work together and they're in community and they're in a small breakout room and they're like, oh, I have the issue. Oh, oh, me too, I have that. Or they'll say, oh, well, I really need a space over on the West side. And they'll say, well, I have a space. I'm not doing anything with, you know, but since COVID and then there's able to build that synergy. So in those small group opportunities, you're able to walk through more carefully and more slowly with a TA, but also working to build with other organizations. And those are going to be 60-minute um, sessions. We can go to the next slide. Next, we have uh, the one-to-one -one technical assistance. So those are those ones that we used to, that we used to do with uh, a year one, where you would have your application, um, and then we would support with the drafting, the revising, the proofreading of your application. These are going to be done both virtually um, and we're going to have opportunity to do some in-person sessions at Impact Hub. So really looking forward to uh, that opportunity and to help with those one-to-one. -one. Uh, starting on or before April 1st, there's going to be a sign-up on the website, on the bcyfund.org website, where you can pick whatever time is convenient for you. And um, you can say, I wanna meet with somebody one-to-one -one at this time. And then we'll have a TA provider available for you to uh, schedule and meet with. Similar, but different than that are the pop-in hours. So those will be at Impact Hub um, in person, and you can drop in um, and to get support. There's gonna be one on May uh, 7th, and then that's the Saturday, and then May 14th. So I envision the May 14th one to have um, a, a good attendance because that's the day before the uh, grant is due. So we'll be there, we'll be available, we'll, be, we'll set up on the tables and we will support as many grantees that come in on that day with the 
uh, the specifics and the details of their application. We go to the next one. And then finally, we have, as Alicia mentioned, the asynchronous support. If you just have a question that might take, you know, less than five minutes for us to respond to, it's the assistance at bcyfund.org email address. And you can start sending emails to that um, today if a question comes to you after we finish having this conversation. So if you just have a quick question about fiscal sponsorship or what does some of the jargon mean on the application or what are next steps once you become a grantee, we could work together to support and answer, answering some of those questions that you might have. Um, so, but we don't have a phone number, so that might be a question that you have. All we have is an email address for right now, and we'll be able to support grantees in that way. Hello. You go to the next slide. As I said, our TA team, this is our beautiful, beautiful, wonderful uh, TA team. So thankful for this entire team of consultants and professionals for uh, jumping aboard. Now you won't see their name on the workshop, um, but just know that we're all sprinkled out throughout what's happening. Uh, if you have a more inclination to talk to one person than another, you can send an email to the assistant at bcyfund.org and we can check availability of our TAs to see. But I understand that some might have a relationship with um, some organizations more than others. So um, you, we could work something out through the assistance at bcyfund.org. But it's a wonderful team. Um, we've been working together and things are mentioned. I'm really, really, really excited to see the outcomes of um, our projects that we're working on. Okay. Next slide. Oh, we made it. So thank you uh, for attending this session. We are going to jump into the question and answer period. Alicia has stayed on to help support in some of the answering of questions that we might have. And then we also have a, a great TA team that's here to help support any answers to questions that we might have in community. So. Absolutely. Um, Kenna, thank you. I, I see so many shout outs to you in the chat. People are energized by your presentation. So thank you so much for leading those efforts around the technical assistance. We are so proud to be able to offer so many hours, I, 120 hours of technical assistance over the next eight weeks. I mean, you really cannot, <laughs> cannot beat that at all. It's really a unique opportunity for us to get to know you all as grantees, as applicants, as community leaders, for us to um, just really kind of um, begin this relationship together. So I do have a question. The questions that are in the Q&A, can everybody see those responses? Um, or do we need to go over those questions to start there? How should we begin? Maybe Shaq could tell me. Hey, Alicia, I was trying to be incognito. Um, there is one that I don't necessarily have an answer for, it, um, but from Francine Shaw Whitson, there's an organ. Oh, I have a quick question. So the questions that have already been responded to, can everyone see those responses? Oh, that yeah. I'm not sure. Yes, I can see those responses on my end. Yeah, I wonder if people in the um, audience can see them. Yeah, can, can people put in the chat if a question in the Q&A box has been answered? Can you see it? Okay, Matthew Leon. Yes, perfect. Okay, and I then we won't go over those. We'll just look at these open questions. Sounds good, everybody? Yes, we can see the response. Hey, Dana Cole, good to see you. All right, so let's start with Francine. Sounds good? <laughs> um, Shaq, are you asking me these questions or should I just keep going? Okay. Um, it's, it's up to you. I can read them or you can just go through them um, and answer them. I'll just go through them. Yeah. And yeah, I'll just go through them. I'm good. All right, everybody, let's start. So we've got, does an organization have to be Baltimore based or serve Baltimore as part of its mission? My organization serves all of the DMV. Well, first of all, Francine Shaw Whitson, thank you so much for your work and for um, investing in the DMV. And the answer to that is that you have to have some centering in Baltimore. So if you're if you're serving Baltimore youth, you can apply for um, for funding, and then you need to show very clearly in your application through your request how those funds will only be used to support the programming that touches those young people. Okay. So you just need to um, be very clear about that. And I would suggest if you are in a situation like that, you'll, that seems like a great opportunity to come to a TA and, and check in on that clarity, get some feedback on the clarity of that piece. Sounds good, Kiana? All right. Awesome. 
great. I'm looking at questions. There were questions about the grant portal. I'm looking for new questions. If you are new 501c3, can you apply? Do we still need a sponsor? And can homeless youth shelters apply? Absolutely. If you're serving young people in Baltimore, then you can apply. That, that eligibility. So remember, if you have a Baltimore-based organization that is serving young people in Baltimore and your organization's budget is over under $250,000 or less, and you are a Maryland nonprofit or have a fiscal sponsor, you are eligible to apply. Now, new is a, is a big word. New means a lot of things. I can tell you as a 501c3 organization, you need to upload your most recent 990. If you are so new that you don't have a 990 yet, we're going to encourage you to get that fiscal sponsorship in order to make that application. Okay. Now, in the coming weeks, um, in about 10 days, you're going to see some more resources that are going to be popping up on that BCYF grassroots uh, fund page. One of those is we're preparing some really robust resources around fiscal sponsorships. We're going to connect you with some local fiscal sponsors that are interested. Also, Fusion Partnerships is producing a fiscal sponsorship 101 event in early April. And in addition, you can go to our YouTube page right now and find a um, hour and a half session from la just from 2021 about fiscal sponsor 101. And since 2021, not much has changed about fiscal sponsors. So it's very up to date. So that's how you can get some more information about that relationship. Thank you so much for your question, Danita. All right, Rhonda asks, if the physical office is located in Baltimore City and primarily serves Baltimore City youth, then they are eligible. Your organization sounds like it has eligibility around there, okay, around in terms of being Baltimore-based, okay? Thank you so much for asking, Rhonda. And there's other ways to prove Baltimore-basedness, and I think we covered that, but that is your organization looks like you have that local eligibility, okay? Hey, can you put this question in the chat? Okay, got it. What about 990N? Yep, of course. So whatever kind of 990 you have, you would submit that one. So if your organization has um, requirements by the federal government because of the size of your budget that you're submitting a certain kind of 990, you're going to submit that. Just if you don't have one, you need a fiscal sponsor. Being a new nonprofit, would I be able, so thank you, Nevada Winrow. Thank you for your question. Lola, being a new nonprofit, would I be able to share my experience to support the application? Would I be able to share my experience? For example, I believe the application asks for a track record, which I do not have under the nonprofit. Oh, great. So yeah, let me, let's talk about that track record question. And I would also suggest showing up for some TA. Track record doesn't mean my nonprofit has been doing this work for so long. But it does, it could, it could mean that. It could also mean I. <laughs> I am a grassroots leader. That means I have been working with youth in my community for a, a long time. And then over time, the work started to crystallize and I formed a nonprofit, right? That's, a, that's how a lot of us got here. I'm, a lot of us got to the nonprofit space because we had young people around us that we cared about. We started to engage with them. Um, and then it started to <laughs> it started to grow. So if that's your case, that would be how you talk about that um, grassroots, right? So uh, Lola is saying, I have 16 years of experience doing the work outside of the nonprofit. And exactly. <laughs> so that's what we're trying to honor here is track record does not mean um, institutional or organizational based track record. It means what's the history of you and these young people that you're working with, right? Or this community that you're serving with. What's connecting you two together, right? I um, mean, it could be your organizational relationship or it could be, you know, your track record as a person um, that your community trusts. I hope that helps to answer that question. I am also, uh, Rhonda, I'm also looking for a Baltimore City-based organization that may want to partner and or needs a, fis a fiscal sponsor. Okay, yeah, we'll definitely check out those resources about fiscal sponsorship coming up and, um, and I hopefully that'll be very helpful, all right? If the nonprofit is not BIPOC, but they would like to provide programming services designed exclusively for the organization on the website, can you apply? Yes, this is a great question because remember, to be eligible, the eligibility quiz doesn't include BIPOC leadership. BIPOC leadership is something that we have clearly labeled as not, doesn't determine you ineligible to apply, but there is, there is a place on the application where you're going to identify those demographics, okay? And there is, right, we, I think the word we're using, somebody key me in, what's the word on the slide that describe the way that we're, 
I want to use the exact word. Hold on one second. Let me let me go to the place so I can say the exact word. Prioritize. There we go. So organizations that are led by white people can still apply, right? So black, brown, indigenous, and Asian, and people of the global majority, their applications, of course, if that the leadership identifies as a person of the global majority, those applications are gonna receive priority. That does not mean that you are not eligible to apply. So please apply, okay, if you're serving, Young people, please apply. So eligibility and priority are not the same. Thank you so much for your question. Could I, could I ask a follow-up question for that? Oh, sure. What if an organization, for instance, I say has a uh, white man executive director, but a majority black board of directors, how do we address that in terms of organizational leadership? I would say in the narrative where we ask you to tell us about your organization, make that clear. So there's a few places in the application to do so. One is in that narrative about your, about your organization. Another is when we ask about the community track record. So if your board of directors is made up of entire people from that community, tell us that, <laughs> okay? We're looking for organizations that have a community accountable um, frame, right? That they're thinking the work I do here is important in this community and I know it because the community continues to affirm the work. So if that's you, apply, all right? Thank you so much, um, Shaq, for giving us that example. Can I apply just for our facility that houses five different youth programs? If your budget, if you're an eligible organization, you can apply, yes, okay, perfect. Will the organization be eligible if they serve a specific population? For example, specific gender, LGBTQ plus or race? Yes, so affinity groups are a very important part of a sector, of our sector, right? Folks who are especially serving um, folks who have some type of marginalized identity. So if you're talking about you're gonna gather um, Latinx kids, or you're gonna gather transgender youth, or you're going to gather um, um, homeless um, children, or you're thinking about kids that are in foster care, some type of affinity. Sometimes people don't care for that. We love it, <laughs> okay? And what, what we love about it is if your community is saying this is what we need, that's what we love, right? So if your community is asking or has asked and is and is and is helping you to understand that this is a need in the community for there to be a, a, a safe space for transgender youth to gather and you're providing that need, you'll be able to reflect that in your application and then we will understand it and be able to support you there. Okay, um, let's see. Do for-profit social impact focused businesses qualify for the grant? Nonprofit organizations? Um, Alicia? Oh, yes. Really? Quick. Sure. Um, I think you may have skipped one question from Matthew Leon. Thank you so much, Shaq. All right, I did. I, I'm sorry, Matthew. <laughs> we have operated under $50,000 as a registered 501c3. So have not had time to file a 990. We need that 990. And if you don't have the 990, then a fiscal sponsorship is going to be your best bet to proceed in this grant cycle. Okay. Thank you so much. Najee, do for-profit social impact focused businesses qualify for the grant and technical assistance? So again, you have to be a Maryland nonprofit or have a fiscal sponsorship, okay? And I would, if you have a for-profit business, but you're looking to do a project that has a charitable mission, I would connect with the fiscal sponsor. That's a great way to, you know, to do that work without having to apply for a 501c3. The link is not working. Are we fixing that in the chat? And thank you for the, thank you, Monique. Thank you for the welcome. Is this the link for the survey? Uh, tell us, Mary, which link isn't working? Put it in the chat for us. I'm looking in the chat too, just to see if there's any other questions. Can you apply and be a fiscal sponsor for someone else? Yes. Yes, you can. Thank you for checking. Does this program replace the Baltimore City Youth Fund? No, it, I, no, it doesn't. I'm trying to think, what is the Baltimore City Youth Fund? Anybody can tell us? We, <laughs> we are not that. <laughs> who, can, who can help us out? Lydell Henry has a question. I think some people will call the Baltimore Children Youth Fund. Okay. The Baltimore City <laughs> Youth Fund, yeah. Okay, yeah, so the, the, the name of this fund is Baltimore Children and Youth Fund, okay? All right. All right, and I see there are folks in the chat. Rhonda Alexander, she's looking for partners. Yeah, she's looking for partnerships. So 
That's a great place to start. Okay, I see the question starting to die down. We'll give it a good old, um, I'm an educator, so we'll give it a good old, you know, teacher weight. I have to make a, a quick comment. Um, sure. So with the TA providers, the intention of this TA is not only for you to have support for the VCYF grant and this grassroots fund grant, but I want you to think bigger, right? Mm -hmm. Think that this is an application that you can use to take with you to other funders, to, to be a thought partner with you, right? To help you just think about your program in different ways, to think about those partnerships that you can have. Um, VCAs have a plethora of knowledge and they know the, the links. They know how to connect you all with those other organizations and how to get in contact with them. Um, so just think of this as that opportunity. So please attend the sessions. There are so many available, different times of the day, Monday through Sunday, every, you know, there's there so many opportunities for you to take advantage of this, but just please think of it as larger than just you know, BCYF. We want to create sustainability for grassroots organizations. We want to see you all thrive both personally and professionally. So please take those this opportunity to do that. All right, I'm going to wrap us up. Um, I'm just going to give us a short recap here. So the grassroots fund, the application is available. You can download the application workbook in a few different formats on our website right now. Um, you can also take an eligibility quiz on our website if you're confused or just want that confirmation, like, am I eligible to apply for the BCYF fund? You can take that eligibility quiz today on our website. We are dispensing approximately $5 million into the youth serving sector of Baltimore City. Really exciting. And we are putting that money directly into the grassroots organizations here in Baltimore City. We are defining grassroots for this grant as organizations that are Baltimore based and youth serving. So youth for us, um, the definition is young people 24 years old and younger. Organizations that are Maryland nonprofits or have a fiscal sponsorship. And finally, organizations where the budget is under $250,000. We will be dispersing 35 grant awards, and those awards will be awarded in August. 35 grant awards, each totaling $150,000, three years. This is a three-year grant, so what does that mean? That means $150,000 dispersed in three equal payments annually. So $50,000 in year one, $50,000 in year two, and $50,000 in year three. We are so excited to work with you, to partner with you, to learn from you and with you, okay? This is the beginning of a connection and a relationship. And I do see this question from Lola. If you've received funding in the past, can you apply again? And the answer is yes, okay? If you've received funding from BC Wife in the past, please apply again. If you didn't receive funding, you applied before, please look at the application and consider whether you're applying again. Great. And if we have youth from Baltimore County who attend our program, does that disqualify us? No, you'll need to make it super clear in your application how the funds will be used to support Baltimore City youth. Okay, Nevada? All right. Now, we are I'm going to move things along. I'm going to turn it over to Kieta to close us out. All right, thank you, Alicia. I really appreciate that presentation. Um, this was really, really a great evening and we finished early, so that's always a good thing. Uh, so we, as I put in the chat a few seconds ago, we appreciate your time um, and we would love it if you could provide us some feedback on this presentation. It will only take about five minutes to complete this survey. As an incentive to sweeten the pot, we will raffle off one $25 e-gift card to a local Baltimore business for every 25 fully completed survey we receive. So please click on the link um, and complete the survey. If you didn't get the link, um, let us know, but they, I posted it about four times into the chat. So with that, I'd like to thank the TA team for um, attending this. Thank you to the participants. Thank you, Alicia Lee, for going through the grant framework. Also, thank you to Kara Ritter, who um, helped us with some BCYF history in the beginning of the presentation. Uh, we appreciate your time, and I hope that you all have an amazing evening. Thank you.